Hello, hello. Welcome. This is our uh, multicultural assembly, and I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm Miss Nixon, the art teacher at Aspen Valley and Aspen Meadow. Today we're celebrating the Irish Celtic culture and the culture of India. We're so excited and we have some special guests today too. So one of the, our, my co-hosts is Mr. Carr. Hi, Mr. Carr. Hi, and good morning, Judy. Good to see you. Thanks for being here with us. Say hi to uh, Desmond for me, please. And we're super excited to uh, have this experience with you. We've been collecting artwork and we've been learning and we've been doing music and Ms. Winter is also here. Ms. Winter, we're so glad that you're here, our excellent PE teacher. Uh, thank you. Hey guys, hi Aspen Meadow, hi Aspen Valley, and soon to be Aspen Ridge. We're so glad to be here. I'm super excited about today and so glad you're here. Oh, saw a little Aspen Strong. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I've been working on that in PE a little. Aspen Strong's in the chat, y'all. Oh yeah, Aspen Strong. <laughs> If you need, need to work on that, a few push-ups will help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, All right, Mary, where are we going to start with? Well, we're starting with oh, oh my, some, something I'm very proud of, my students and their artwork. Uh, this is on the Irish Celtic culture, and it speaks for itself. So enjoy.
name is Corbin Wilson and I am Irish. Here's uh, a picture of my great great grandpa in, um, in front, uh, front of uh, Irish Castle. My name is Corbin. I am Irish. Every year I have on um, St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day corned beef and cabbage. Here is a picture that I drew. My name is Corbin, and this is my mom and dad on the Cliffs of Moher. The Cliffs of Moher, and in Ireland, in Ireland, huh? on their honeymoon. On their honeymoon. Wow. <laughs> Uh, hey, thank you, Corbin. Thank you, Corbin, for sending in a photo of, you know, of your culture. And uh, that was great. And, you know, we, we appreciate when the families send in things that relate to the culture. So thank you. And I also want to send a little thank you to uh, Mr. Kilcrease, who was also part of uh, the art projects that we did this for the Irish cult culture and then the culture of India, too. So. All right. Oh, Corbin, I'm excited because you know what? My family's Irish and we have corned beef and cabbage every St. Patrick's Day too. I love it. I'm not so much on the cabbage part, but, um, or the soda bread part. And that's what we did in PE. We, um, you know, we do the games and the food and, you know, kind of go all goes together kind of thing. So we um, learned about soda bread. And I actually had a couple of kids said they tried to make it. And they said it turned out okay it's pretty easy um to make but i'm not a big fan so maybe that's the other half of my irish that does or the other half that's not irish that doesn't like it i don't know so and i wore my um tree of life necklace also it's hard to see but i love those pictures that the kids did i got my celtic rings on i also have my other irish ring on um i'm gonna mess up the word it's called Fleda, i think it is it's a heart with a crown on the top it's very famous in, in Ireland. Sometimes they have hands around the heart. The heart means love. The crown means loyalty. The hands mean friendship. And so that's a very popular um, thing that they have in, in Ireland. If you wear the heart out, it means you're single and looking for love. If you wear the heart in, it's that you're in a relationship and that you love someone. So a little Irish history for you there. But anyways, I want to also mention that the kids also learned not only about soda bread, they learned about potatoes and how important that was to Ireland. It came from um, South America, but it came to Ireland and that has been one of their main um, incomes and for the country. And so there was a time when there was a famine though, and that's when a lot of Irish came to America. And that's when they, they left the country when the potatoes were not growing well. So we learned about that. We also learned about hurling, one of an interesting game. It's fun to find out these different games that they have in other countries, not like ours at all. It's a little bit like lacrosse, but really fast paced. They actually use that game to train their military. So it was kind of fun to learn about these different um, things that we have um, in other countries. Their food is different, their games are different. And so I hope some of your kids got to see that. I did put out there that I wanted kids to learn the Irish jig and didn't get much response on that one. But I think Mr. Carr got a lot more response on the music half, though. Ms. Winter, we learned a little bit about Irish dancing, especially a few specific steps, actually, the hop one, two, three, and then the move called sevens. And so uh, you'll see some of our dancers in action in this video, as well as a song we learned in the Irish language called Oro Movajin. Please enjoy. Mm -hmm.
voice my sails and I'll journey west. Back for the night time fast. Oh, Roma Oh, Roma Oh, Oh, wow. That was great, Mr. Carr. Thank you. Great. So fun. And oh, I wanted to say also hello out there to all the people who have been saying hi to us TJ and the Pittman family. Ah, oh, hi, TJ. Here they are. Oh, and Anar, that's funny. Yes, yes. And uh, the Steele family. Oh, and oh, say hello, please, to Nicole for me. So glad that you're all out here. And Mary. I'm so excited for what you're about to tell us. I can't even believe this is about to happen. Oh my gosh. Well, we have a special guest right, coming right now. And uh, they're from the California Arts Academy Celtic Motion Dance Company right here in Fresno. And they're about to perform for you Irish dancing. California Arts Academy, we cannot tell you how excited we are to be performing for Aspen Public Schools. We have some great stuff coming up for you. I just, first, we all watched um, what you did with your artwork and your dancing, your jigs, um, the clatter. it's pronounced clatter. it's not easy to pronounce Celtic words, um, and um, your smiles, your side sevens, Wow, we are so impressed. Your art week is just beautiful. So thank you for all of the heart and the love that you put into your work. This is just wonderful. And we feel really um, honored to um, be able to participate with that. So the first thing that you're going to see is um, um, something called Hard Shoe. And the American tap dance actually has its beginning through Irish hard shoe when they came to New York City when everybody was emigrating into New York City to the United States there were lots of different groups and cultures and um, when the Irish were dancing and the people from Harlem came over and saw their beautiful dance they thought we can do something like that so they, they nailed bottle caps to the bottoms of their shoes and then American tap dance was born not everybody wears curly wigs anymore, but they did for a long time. And um, in Scottish, you'll see that their arms are raised. So some things to look out for, okay? Enjoy the show. <laughs> Scottish 
bag pipes. So the Highland pipes that you made those beautiful pictures of are actually from Scotland in the Highlands, and um, they were used to um, send messages. To, they're very, very loud, and they would stand on a mountaintop and just play them, and everybody would hear in the villages below. Enjoy. <laughs> Now you're going to see some soft shoe dances. And the soft shoe that you just saw um, with our dancer um, is kind of like ballet slippers with lots of extra laces. Can you imagine that? So they're black shoes with lots of laces on them. Are you ready for another dance? Thank you. 
hope you enjoyed that. Did you notice how they were weaving in and out of each other? Did you also notice that in the beautiful artwork that you did, thank you too. Um, did you notice that in the beautiful artwork that you did, um, there were there were pictures of weavings like knots, and that is evident in a lot of our dances as well. And you'll notice it even a little bit in the music if you listen very, very carefully. There's some more. to this wonderful day and um, we just wish you all the best. We thank you for honoring um, our culture with your beautiful work and your artwork. So thanks so much. If you're interested in participating in classes, we are at California Arts Academy. You can just Google us and we would love to have you. We saw some pretty talented dancers out there. So um, come on and join us. We also have art classes. <laughs> thanks everybody. Uh, thanks for your wonderful thank comments you. too. Thank you for the nation. That was wonderful. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Oh, my. That was great. I learned a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I couldn't. I, I was, like, moving back here in my office. I hope everybody got <laughs> That was awesome. Maybe I need to teach that instead of square dancing next year. The only problem is I have to lead it. And I'm not sure that's happening. I can barely do the cha-cha slide with the instructions telling me what to do. Yes, so, fun. oh, that was amazing. That was that was incredible. I love the bagpipes. I just I love it all. They mm -hmm. they are impressive. That was that was super amazing. Thanks. So thank you so much again, um, Celtic Motion. That was super mm -hmm. cool. If you're interested in dancing, guys, there's so many places like that around here. Mm -hmm. Fresno is. Um, has so many things like that around. There's different dancing and different places you can go if you need something to do and activities and something you love, art, music, activities, uh, moving. There's all kinds of stuff out there. And so I'm glad that we 
thank you, Miss Nixon, for finding them and looking oh. into it. And we're trying to share those with you guys. There's there's um, so much out there that we can learn and and do. So really appreciate that. Okay, we're gonna go right into our India culture. And um, I we have a special guest with us again. She actually joined us last time. Um, Miss D'Souza is going to join us again in a video that we um, had with her. So D'Souza, her last name is actually actually Portuguese. Now that's because the where she came from India, Goa, India, we're gonna learn about, um, was a Portuguese providence first. So her last name is Portuguese. But if you remember, she was with us before on our African history because she actually grew up in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But her um, family actually is from India. So she got a chance to go back to visit where her family came from and go visit the land and the people and see that. And so she's going to share some of that with us in this video that we're going to show you. And she's a family. She uh, she's a family of Aspen. That's right. Yes, she is. Her yeah. daughter is goes mm -hmm. to school with us. So you might catch a glimpse of her in the video. Mm -hmm. excited about Goa. Hi everyone, I am so excited to share a little bit about Goa with you. Um, as I had said the last time when I saw you guys a couple months ago, I'm very strongly influenced by my Kenyan culture and heritage, but that is based on the fact that my ancestors, like my grandmother, immigrated from Goa to Kenya. So I never really knew anything about this part of my culture and my roots until a couple years ago when my husband felt it would be a good idea for me to fully embrace and understand where I'm from. So a lot of the pictures and everything I'm sharing is from my experience and my excitement of the things I saw that were so different from what I am used to in my normal life. Goa is very different from the rest of India. It became a state of India only in 1987. Before that, it was a territory of India, and that only happened in 1961. Um, and so in December 1961, the Indian government felt, you know, all colonial influences needed to leave the country. And Goa was one of the last places in India that needed to be a part of the big country of India. They had a small war and during that conflict, my mom explained to me that that was the time when the Portuguese left. And that was after ruling my ancestors for over 450 years. So 450 years ago, when they landed, it was around the time soon after Columbus had done his exploration. And so different countries around Europe felt they also needed to take stake in some part of the world. So Vasco da Gama decided that he was going to do this for Portugal. And he went down to the south end of Africa, going to South Africa and coming up to Kenya, and from Kenya, he cut across to India, and there was apparently a monsoon or something, and the locals told him he needed to stay low and hunker down. So he ended up being going down one of the rivers, and he came across this land, and he claimed it for Portugal. And so the Portuguese ruled Goa for 450 years, approximately. Their goal, just like any other place, was to convert the people to Catholicism. So when people did not convert to Catholicism, they persecuted them. So over here, this is the spot. If you can see in this first picture over here where the white car is, that is a river right in front of it. And so that is basically where they state that Vasco da Gama landed. And when he landed, he felt it was an appropriate place to claim for us. So in the town of my in-laws, the Feast of San Joao was a big event. And it's basically the Feast of John the Baptist. Uh, when they said floats, I was imagining, just like everyone here, a parade going down the center of the street. I did not realize we were going to the river. And each one of these boats represent the village that they're from. So they came down the river in these boats and they decorated it with items which represented their culture or their town and the community. People thought we were crazy <laughs> to travel to India for six weeks during the monsoon season. I honestly was not sure how this was going to look for us, but it was the best decision I feel we made as a family 
because I felt we were able to see how people truly lived. So we went to this place called Ancestral Goa, where I had the opportunity to see how people probably covered themselves during the monsoon season. Palm trees are everywhere. Coconut trees are everywhere. The covering, his makeshift raincoat or umbrella is basically woven together. And since Goans love their fish, he has to be holding fish because what else would you do? I mean, they go to the river or the ocean after breakfast to go get their fish for lunch. And then they go back after their afternoon nap to go and get their fish for dinner. So um, here are some things that we experienced in village life, which was really exciting. So this gentleman in the tree, he, I do not know if you can see him, but I was taking a walk and I decided I wanted to explore this village that, that I was going to be at for the six weeks of my life. And I saw this man in a tree and I asked him if I could take a picture and I wanted to know what he was doing. And he removed these mangoes. And so as he's up there pulling them out, I believe his mom, yep, his mom's right there at the bottom with a basket and a rope and she was getting them down carefully. And this is an example of a rice paddy field. It's in a village in a South Goa. So as I said earlier, Goans love their fish. They will have it all times of the day. Their staple is rice, um, a simple red curry with nothing in it, um, and a fried piece of fish, which has all the spices and everything. They live off that. So over here, one of our neighbors in the village of Vasco asked us if we wanted to go fishing. And my daughter loves fishing. And I know my friends who live out in the country, they have wells, but this was really different because the wells here are usually attached to your home. They really rely, some places really rely on the water that comes during the monsoon season. So in the next video, it's of this place uh, in Ancestral Goa, which shows how deep the well is. Many of the wells that we went to were really small, probably um, the size of two student desks, but this is massive. And of course it was raining. So you can see the steps, it allows them to step on down and get as low as they can when the water levels go drop. And you can see how high it can possibly get with more rain that comes. I did not know that um, they use a lot of Portuguese words. I knew that my last name's Portuguese, but I never really made the connection of how things were connected even to our food. So across Goa, they love their pal, which is just bread rolls. I became really conditioned to the sound of the boy delivering the pow every day. And I would hear the sound and I would just stop what I was doing just to go and see where he was. And of course we have our cow that <laughs> happens to be in the video as well. And they just walk the streets? The cows, yes. I never saw one animal get hurt while I was there. <laughs> it was impressive. So that was a sound, no matter which village we were in, we heard that sound and by the end we, we knew, oh, that's pow, they're bringing pow to the door. <laughs> so, um, and every village had a small bakery. If you didn't get your pow in the morning, you could go to this house and just go pick up your pow. One other thing that I love, I love palm trees, I love coconut trees, and um, they were everywhere. Coconut trees are not native to Goa, but they use the coconut trees for everything in their life. So um, this is another picture from Ancestral Goa of an example of a man climbing his coconut tree to get the coconuts. Um, my husband's uh, family, they had about eight, nine trees on their property. And he informed me the reason is his grandmother told him that if they ever need any part of a tree in the future, this is her way of giving them an inheritance. So if a part of the house breaks down, then they're able to chop down the tree to help rebuild certain structures of the house. If they need the coconut, then they have food to sustain themselves. If they need um, the outside husks, they can use that to help a fire. So that was her logic in making sure that her future generations would have something, which I thought was really cool. Um, because it had nothing to do with money, but a future investment that they could have for generations to come.
And here is my father-in-law grating the white of the coconut. His sidekick is right there in the picture, making sure he does it correctly. What they would do from this is make um, coconut milk, which they would, which would then be used for coconut curry or for any coconut chutney. Um, or they also sprinkle it in their cooked vegetables. So they use coconut liberally in every part of their life. So I thought this was really another cool part. So in every village, they have a school. And this happens to be the school that my mother went to. So I was really excited to see the school and see what it had to offer. This is an example of their classroom. I was told this was the second grade classroom my mom was in when she was little. And um, these are probably the same desks uh, that they had back then. This was a sleeping quarter. So they had, it isn't like, board, this was a boarding school, but it isn't like how boarding schools are here in America. This was for the children who could not travel far to their village. So my mom's village was an hour and a half um, away in modern transportation. So she explained that it took like a whole day's travel when she was a kid. So she and her sister stayed here and they only went home on their holidays. This is the garden. My mom told me that she and her sisters planted lots of, they helped plant this garden. Um, they've been, this garden has been around for uh, quite a few decades. That's beautiful. Is it flowers or vegetables or? Vegetables. Mm. Vegetables, there are some flowers, but basically they were growing whatever they needed because since they were the borders, they would need the food for the evening. So this is uh, part of their contribution. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, there was a school nearby which didn't have borders. It was also a um, Catholic school. We were on uh, one side of the street. We had gone to take care of some errands from a grocery store and we did not pay attention to the time and we ended up standing in one spot for about 20 minutes. So I decided I was going to take some videos to see how different transportation, picking up your kids, is over there <laughs> compared to here. So scooters are a main form of transport. It helps you maneuver through the traffic. And while I was taking a video of this, I was looking to see how many kids were stacked on one scooter. That was <laughs> what I was most excited about seeing. But I think in the next video, it shows there's, I think, a couple which had at least three. Oh, awesome. four. There we go, four. <laughs> wow. Three plus the adult, four. Yes, three plus the adult. <laughs> it looks like the students are wearing uniforms. Yeah, for the most part, um, that's a great question. So most, for the most part um, in India, as far as I'm aware, um, everyone wears uniform, whether you're in public or uh, private school. So the other thing that I was really impressed was the fact that how much respect there was for animals. I never saw one animal injured. Uh, during our entire time there. Um, people really respect all the animals. Here we have, it was a hot day and I was just exhausted by everything. And all of a sudden this white cow comes meandering through the marketplace. And <laughs> I was in shock the first time because I, in my mind, it was like there are fruits and vegetables and there's food around and now there's a cow. <laughs> but he was, I guess the mascot of that marketplace I mean, I got used to the cow and I would always look for him every Friday when I went. These are buffalo. Um, they, 15, 20 years ago, hundreds of years ago, they were used to till the land and to help with the plowing of the rice fields. But now they are not, so they just roam. And this um, herd has, um, has a herdsman who was guiding it. And of course, um, there were dogs everywhere. And um, once again, like I said, the uh, people really are strong in their faith and the church doors were always open. So you'd walk into church and you'd have to just be careful because there could be a dog, a stray dog like this sitting right next to you in the pew. And so every now and then an elderly person wouldn't see them and you'd hear the dog kind of go, ah! then the goats are around. This is a park that I would walk around um, and just kind of enjoy some fresh sunshine when it wasn't raining but they were there to graze um, and I guess tend to the land and uh, maintain the grass mm -hmm. they're mowing the lawn out there yeah long time ago pigs were used as a way to keep the areas clean so every house um, even 30 years ago had at least one pig the pig took care of 
the food that people ate. So any leftovers, they could toss it over to the pig and also um, a person's personal needs and because it wasn't as though there was a hole in the ground. It kind of was a hole in an outhouse. And then it just kind of, when you washed yourself because there's no toilet paper, you washed yourself, it kind of went into the pig's pen and it was taken care of that way. That is why people in those uh, regions, they don't eat pigs because that was the purpose of the pigs and they were seen as unclean animals. And that oh. is it. Well, that was really informative. I, uh, I, I want to go to India now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was really eye-opening, that's for sure. I have a quick question. Sure thing. So, so um, the students have been learning about different sports and food um, in different parts of India and things um, for the most part. But being, being um, Portuguese kind of first, is soccer the first love or is cricket? I feel from what I noticed, cricket seems to have been the yeah. first love. Now so in our family, studied, soccer is cricket. big. Okay. Every person in our family, soccer is big, so. <laughs> yeah, Portuguese um, usually kind of go for the soccer. Um, right. um, I know that. Um, and so the kids did learn about cricket because one of my son's best friends is um, family from India. And I asked him, what does he do? And they said, we play cricket. And so I learned a whole new thing. I mean, I knew it, cricket actually started in England, but it seems like it's huge in India. And so I was yeah. just wondering, but the Portuguese seem to kind of go towards soccer. So right. they did learn soccer is the number one sport in the world. Cricket is number two. That's right. Because they, overall, India was highly influenced by, um, by the English. So, right. um, but uh, Goa was the only one that was uh, influenced by the Portuguese. Portuguese. So, yeah. Thanks, you guys, Bye, so much everybody. again. I Bye. appreciate it. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Our multicultural assemblies. Mm -hmm. So thank you, uh, Sharita D'Souza, for, for that great, great um, video. We really appreciate that and learned a whole lot. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Learned a ton. And we want to just take a moment right here to say, if you know somebody that could benefit from the awesome Aspen community, we are enrolling at all of our schools, Aspen Meadow, Aspen Valley, and also the brand new school, Aspen Ridge, which is eighth and ninth grade this upcoming year. So if you're an eighth grader moving on, check out the new option for you for ninth grade, Aspen Ridge. We'd love to continue to have you as part of our community. All right, Mary, you got something for us? Yes. Well, now we're, you know, we're now in the new culture of India. And so uh, I want to uh, show you what our students have done um, and rep that represented India and their wonderful artwork. So enjoy.
Wow. I'm so proud of my, my students. Absolutely. So and I, want to, I want to thank Mr. Kilcrease again for he was part of the, um, you know, with teaching uh, the lessons uh, for uh, the Irish culture and Indian culture. Yes. Uh huh. And I agree. Hudson, it was awesome. Great job. All of the artwork <laughs> was so beautiful. And um, we got a shout out to Miss Corsan's class, too. Hi, guys. Oh, yeah. They cool. said hi. Awesome. Thank you, Judy. Yes. Oh my goodness. I it we have learned so much. Honestly, as you know, we're we're learning so much so that we can try to uh, experience this with everybody, and it's been awesome. Yeah, you're right. Okay, one more video for you. Another video celebrating the Indian culture. This one about music, and we learned a little bit about some instruments, and we learned a song called Allahu. And you'll see our teacher was Balu. So I hope you enjoy this video. You'll get to see our Aspen singers in action. Malikul Mulk La Sharik Allahu Vahadu Shams Tabrez Gar Khuda Kalbi Khushbu La ilaha illa hu Sare ga ma pa dha Allahu 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 Yes, that song will be stuck in my head for all morning, probably. <laughs> all day. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we are wrapping up our assembly here for the month of April and are celebrating also March. And we have one more assembly planned for you at the end of the year. And this final assembly is going to feature an art show with Ms. Mm -hmm. Nixon. And it's also going to feature the talent show. So start thinking of your talents, everybody. If you can sing, if you can dance, if you can play an instrument, if you can draw a picture. Uh, oh, Ms. Nick, this is, uh, if you can- Karate. Be, oh, karate, okay. If you can do karate. Anything that you can think of that you could do in front of a camera that would be cool for us to see on a talent show, we'd love for that to happen. Uh, so I'll be sending you more information soon, but start thinking about what you could do for the talent show. We'll need to gather up all those videos in the next couple of weeks. All right. Thank you so much for being with us, Pittman family, and all the classes out there. It has yes. been a class. Yes. Awesome. So we want to send you off with an Irish blessing. There are lots of them out there, but we thought because of what we were doing, 
we would send you off with a great goodbye. So may your troubles be less. And your blessings be more. And nothing but happiness come through your door. <laughs>